Hello, I'm Simon Calder and I've just touched down at Hong Kong International Airport. For the next 48 hours, I want to show you that this is the most exciting city in the Wild East. Hong Kong is tucked just inside the tropics under 12 hours non-stop flying time from London or Manchester. The city distills the best of the Far East and offers a vision into the future while celebrating the past. Getting your bearings is easy. As a tourist, you're most likely to be either on the island, which is divided into Causeway Bay, Wan Chai, Admiralty and Central, or you're here at the tip of the Kowloon Peninsula in Sim Sat Sui. Demand for hotels is intense because Hong Kong is both a very popular stopover and a compelling destination in its own right. Happily, though, there's plenty of competition for your custom, which means high standards and good rates. I'm paying the equivalent of £90 a night here at the Shi Hotel, which calls itself a contemporary boutique property. A cynic might say that means a couple of bits of modern art in reception, but I'll tell you what else there is. Have a look at this. If your smartphone needs recharging as well as you after a long journey, you just pop it on there. All ready to go, full of energy. 2001, a sleep odyssey. Well, it's fine. It's very central, there's Wi-Fi, it's clean. That's all you need. And being on the 20th floor, I thought, great, fantastic harbour view. Well, I'm sure there was about 20 years ago. There's a lot to be said for staying on Hong Kong Island too because of the invigorating mix of skyscrapers and traditional life crammed into 30 mountainous square miles. On Arbuthnot Road in the mid-levels district, there's a hotel where the room rate buys much more than just a good night's sleep. In 2012, the idea was hatched to convert a service department block into a very special hotel. In the rooms, we have a queen-size bed, um, as well as a working desk with a printer and a scanner. The mini bar is included, and the breakfast is also included. We have a bag of snacks for you too, in case you want to nibble on a little snacks. Um, it's called loop bag, so we have that for you as well. And in the evening, we also have a night loop bag containing some noodles and vitamin water and some other crackers. Um, so we have that for you. And in the evening between 6 and 8 o'clock, we have happy hour by the reception. It's called Low Bar. We offer complimentary wine as well as beer and other drinks. And how much is Ovalo going to cost? Well, for a regular room, you could pay around £200 a night. And for a little more, you get extra space and facilities in what's called a super shiny room. <laughs> Want to arrive in style in a super shiny green Rolls Royce? If you book into the peninsula, this is what can meet you at the airport. The peninsula opened in 1928 as the finest hotel east of Suez and has been the top address at the foot of Kowloon ever since. And if you're looking for Hong Kong's top of the range accommodation option, try this. Hollywood celebrities stay in the 26th floor Peninsula Suite, of course, but the Peninsula has also been a star of the silver screen itself in the James Bond classic, The Man with the Golden Gun. In the study, a tablet computer puts you in control of everything, including the curtains. But I think four words sum up this place for me. Harbour View Jacuzzi Bathroom. All yours for a shade over £10,000 a night. The peninsula dominates the waterfront, just the place to start a shoreline hike. Start at the clock tower, which might look a bit odd standing there all on its own, but in fact, that's what remains of the southern terminus of the Kowloon Canton Railway, which used to end right here by the waterside. Yeah. 
Next up, the Hong Kong Museum of Art. Wednesday is a good day to come here because it's free. Thursday is a bad day because it's closed. The rest of the week though, it's only 10 Hong Kong dollars, less than a pound. Soon becomes clear that this hike is actually just a sequence of photo opportunities. This has to be one of the best urban walks in the world, with Victoria Harbour offering a soothing dimension to the fast-moving city. From fine art to screen gems, next up is the Avenue of Stars, although it should be said that they're mostly local heroes rather than global celebrities. Louis Koo. No, I haven't either. All aboard for the finest piece of public transport in the world. The Star Ferry is one of Hong Kong's simplest and cheapest thrills. Around 20 pence each way on the lower deck, which I think gives the best views. It's been shuttling across Victoria Harbour since 1888. Though there are now Trans Harbour Road connections, the ferry is still the most exciting way to travel between Kowloon and Hong Kong Island, especially at night, and it runs until midnight. Other forms of transport are available, starting with double-deck trams. They look all the more antiquated as they ding-ding their way through Hong Kong's slickest and tallest towers. The underground is the fastest way to get around, with frequent trains that pack in thousands of travellers. Fares start at around 40 pence. And another fantastic piece of public transport on Hong Kong Island the Mid-Levels Travelator, the world's longest moving walkway and a magic carpet for footsore tourists. It's a free fast track to lunch because close to the escalator you can choose from one of the many open air food stalls known as Dai Pai Dongs. This is my favourite place for lunch in the Mid-Levels. It's called Sing Hen Yue. Is that correct? Yep. Thank goodness for that. And this I have ordered, it's uh, the macaroni, the beef, and the tomato with egg on top. And in Cantonese, what is it called? Just order the macaroni. Many people come to Hong Kong specifically to shop and the 21st century malls offer all the designer choice you could want with the advantage of an absence of sales tax on anything except alcohol and tobacco. But I'd rather have something made to measure. Now I'm dining in style tonight, so I've got to get a smart shirt. Let me give you a little bit of retail history, if I may. I had an Asian liaison with a Malaysian tailor in a strictly sartorial sense. I ordered a made-to-measure suit, but when I collected it, it seemed to be measured for somebody else. My friends thought that I was wearing it for a joke when I got back to Britain. So, to avoid that happening again, and indeed, the risk of being arrested at Heathrow, I have decided to come to see Mr. Raja at Raja Fashions. They've got a very good reputation. I'm only going to order a shirt. Um, I've come to see Mr. Raja. This way. Ah, Mr. Yeah. Raja. Nice meeting you. Nice Mr. to meet Raja, you. All well. Simon Calder. Nice meeting famous you. Famous tailor. Hong Kong's most famous tailor, I think. Um, I'm standing right next to him, and you can guess which one of us looks the smarter. Uh, what looks smart? <laughs> Never been measured up for a shirt. Oh, okay. While my shirt measurements were sent off to the workshop, Mr. Raja gave me a tour around his showroom. Some hours later. How are you, Mr. Simon? Hello, very nice to All see you, good, Mr. Raja. Very good. Your shirt ah, is ready. This is see very how good. How fast we do it? You ah. cannot believe, you know. <laughs> okay. Same day service, on. you know. Yeah, very good. Thank you. How is my man looking? 
Well, that's very Extra nice of you. Extra thread, no charge. Extra thread, that's fantastic. Well, I've never had a shirt like this. Now I have to pay you. And look, you, I've, I've even got ma magic. Well, matching wallet, matching, matching wallet dollars, and money. Sir. Yes. I'm going to change back to my other shirt Thank now because this much. is for special and it's quite warm out there. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. If you love shopping as much as you love Hong Kong, you're in the right place. Every evening at about five o'clock, the retail axis shifts here to Temple Street in Kowloon for the night market. If you'd rather learn your fortune than spend one, well, at the top of the night market, there's a whole array of fortune tellers reading everything from your palm to your mind. And if they say your luck's in, well, just across the road, there's a mahjong parlour for China's complex and compelling national game. <music> to begin your evening in style, come to the 25th floor of one of Hong Kong's oldest skyscrapers. Now reinvented as Seba, a very stylish bar and restaurant. So what am I doing here? Well, I haven't gone for one of the many cocktails. They've got mojitos, they've got chocolate martinis, and their signature cocktail is called I Know I'm Beautiful. It contains Sauvignon Blanc, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cognac, Mango, and Peach Liqueur. I don't think I'd be beautiful after that, but I probably think you were. Meanwhile though, I've just settled for a pint, a £10 pint. Certainly worth it for the view, and by no means the most expensive one I've ever bought. I've been to Norway. Well, my shirt's changed, and so is my luck. Would you believe they're giving out free beer and canapes at this pop-up bar? Mm. Now, having got my appearance right, got an appetite, I've got to get some altitude up there. Sit here, thank you. Fresh, stylish, appealing. No, not my new shirt, but Hutong, the restaurant that specializes in Northern Chinese cuisine from the Sichuan, Beijing, and Shanghai areas. Now, I've been told that the food is so good here, you actually take your eyes off the view. While I'm waiting for the food, I'm going to the gents. No, just to show you what it's like. Look at this. Apparently, the ladies are equally artistic and dinner is a feast for the eyes as well as the stomach. Half a plank's worth of lamb ribs, a plate of lotus root, something I've never tried before, and the house speciality. This is a red lantern, a mountain of chilies. It's gonna be an exciting night. The spiritual dimension is an essential part of Hong Kong life. For many residents, each day begins by tuning mind and body with the delicate and balletic art of Tai Chi, a performance for the soul and the watching visitor. Hong Kong is full of places of more formal worship, with St John's Cathedral on the island, one of the most beautiful. It's where the Church of England meets the tropics. Good morning. The Taoist temple of Man Mo is dedicated to the gods of war, that's man, and literature, that's Mo. But it's much more than that. It was built in the mid 19th century, shortly after the British took over. And the Chinese community didn't entirely trust their new colonial masters. So the temple served as a social centre, administering justice, caring for the poor and helping with medicine. Today the air is heavy with incense as worshippers appeal to a host of deities. Green for learning, red for justice. Tourists are always welcome to wander in and around the Man Mo Temple. Hong Kong is naturally accommodating and the people are accustomed to life at close quarters. After nourishing the spirit, time to feed the body. 
I've come to the, well, unfashionable end of Kowloon, a long way from the tourist areas, and it's the last place that you'd imagine you might find a Michelin-starred restaurant, until you discover Tim Ho Wan. Tim Ho Wan means bring good fortune, and Mr Mac, the owner, has brought plenty to his customers. Dim Sum loosely translates as touching the heart, but what it really means here in Hong Kong is fast, delicious food and probably the cheapest Michelin-starred restaurant in the world. None of these dishes costs more than the equivalent of two pounds. So I've got some steamed prawns, I've got some rice rolls, three barbecue buns with pork inside and a nice bit of cake oh, and some free tea. With 7 million people, about the same as London, Hong Kong is one of the most densely populated places on Earth. Yet, as well as being frenetic, it's friendly and surprisingly green. Hong Kong Park is a proper garden in the city, infiltrating among all the high-rises. You can feel the sense of serenity and also the free Wi-Fi. Two hours, high speed. Thank you. In a corner of the park, you find the oldest Western building in Hong Kong, Flagstaff House, which is where the commanders of British forces used to live until the sunset on the Empire. There's also the largest aviary in this part of Asia, named after Sir Edward Yude, who was governor of Hong Kong 40 years ago. There are said to be 100 species of birds here. Humans can get a bird's eye view by climbing 100 feet to the top of the lookout tower. There's also a modern memorial in the park, not to the victims of war, but to the healthcare workers who died fighting SARS, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, which visited Hong Kong in 2003. Just on the edge of the park, there's the terminus for the start of a journey up through the deep green vegetation that's draped over Victoria Peak. Peak time for the Peak Tram. It was the first funicular railway in Asia, designed in 1881 by Alexander Findlay Smith, who you know of as the builder of the West Highland Railway in Scotland. Let me tell you about the class system in the colonial era. If you lived on the peak, you travelled first class. If you were a soldier or a policeman, second class. And if you were a mere servant, well, you were stuck in the cheap seats, third class with me. And in first class, there was one seat reserved for the governor. Nobody was allowed to occupy it until two minutes before the tram left, just in case he felt like a ride and turned up. The 10 minute trip deposits you not at the top of the mountain, but at the foot of a shopping mall. And after an almost endless sequence of escalators, you get to a point which is actually higher than Mount Everest. Well, it's not, but frankly, on a day like today, I can tell you anything. Welcome to the very top of Victoria Peak, about 1,500 feet above Hong Kong Harbour. This is the city's highest viewing platform, or as it's known today, highest platform. This view may be familiar to people who've travelled on the West Highland Railway in Scotland. Even when Victoria Peak is shrouded in cloud, here on the other side of the water, you can still get formidable views from Sky 100. Now, that might sound like a satellite television channel, but in fact, it's an observation deck about 1,300 feet above the water, near the top of Hong Kong's highest building. And from here, you can see the way that the high rises crowd together, reaching for the sky on the crumpled landscape of Hong Kong Island. It's half as high again as the viewing platform at the Shard in London. And with a 360 degree panorama, you can peer north towards mainland China. 
the great new cultural opening in the summer of 2014, PMQ on Hollywood Road in Hong Kong Island, full of studios for the brightest young designers. But why the strange name? PMQ's creative director is William Toe. PMQ comes from the name Police Mary Quarter. This, um, this site was built actually in um, the year 1951 when the uh, British government wanted to attract local um, young generation to join the police force. So they built these two blocks of buildings um, providing residency for the police family. It's little short of miraculous that the building has survived as a testament to the late British era and that it's been so imaginatively reinvented as PMQ. Across in Kowloon, my cultural highlight is the Hong Kong Museum of History. Hong Kong's story is compelling. Victoria had only just been crowned queen when the island was claimed for Britain, followed by Kowloon and the New Territories. The museum tells how Chinese culture fused with British colonialism to create a unique territory, which was handed back to China in 1997 as a special autonomous region. It's amazing how the character of the city has remained constant and constantly energising. Some cities have places where people gather to watch the sun go down. In Hong Kong, everybody crowds onto the Kowloon waterfront to watch the lights go up. Every evening at 8, there's a 15-minute laser show featuring the skyline of Hong Kong Islands. 40 buildings contribute to this spectacular, which has grown to become the world's largest permanent sound and light show in a city that loves to bathe in the limelight. High and mighty, yet gentle. Even if you can't tell your feng shui from your tai chi, Hong Kong will welcome you and offer day after day of intense experiences. It also opens a window to China beyond, but that's another journey. Right now, I'm content to stand and stare at a city that never ceases to amaze. You can put yourself in the director's chair. This is our director, most action he's seen all day. Oh. <laughs> Why can't I do doors? Why can't I do doors? 